and uh, the uh, vampire procedures uh, <clears throat> list already includes some useful um, stuff for our damaged event. Um, let's uh, let's take a rundown on this. First off, who is being damaged? We're creating an instance of an object for who has been damaged. Um, we're tracking a potential projectile of the cause because uh, if you're if you're hit by a projectile, the cause get is not going to be the actor who shot you. It's going to be it's going to be the projectile itself that hit you. And if it's a projectile, <clears throat> if it's a projectile, um, we need to get the owner, the shooter, and that's done here. Um, so what this particular rule system is doing is it's checking to see if if the uh, if the bullet object if the if the projectile has a bullet flag essentially it was an instant fire weapon it checks to see if a vampire was hit vampires only take normal damage from uh, from a uh, bullet while non vampires will take lethal damage from a bullet and what it does is it uh, it sends a command to do damage again and now what and did this return zero this this essentially stops the script and and uh, has the amount of damage uh, be uh, zero and anything uh, anything this uh, damage uh, event returns this will be the actual damage that ends up being sent to the actor So what what this does what, what this actor uh, damage command is going to do is it's actually going to start up this uh, damage event again, but this time the damage is coming from the shooter. So now the the uh, the owner of the effect is no longer a bullet. It's no longer a projectile. It's now an actual actor, the the actor who fired the round at the player or other NPC. And so this uh, particular condition will no longer pass. So when it gets to this condition, <clears throat> if the uh, if the the receiver of the damage is a vampire and the damage type is zero, which essentially this uh, this this means that the damage type was normal damage. It's essentially the same as this variable of normal damage. That damage is halved, so that literally this 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 command here was all that was needed to override the amount of damage that was going to be received. <clears throat> and this particular debug message just tells you that the damage procedure was called, and it tells you how much damage was received and what type of damage type, and it goes through this array here and um, we could even go as far as to add even more rules and say that uh, um, a vampire who receives normal damage um, well can be invulnerable to normal damage so we could do that if we set that to zero Vampires will never receive any kind of damage from normal damage. <clears throat> so all we have to do is just save this script here. And we can put these uh, these scripts. We just go into our... Uh, okay, so what you do is you just go into your tutorial, go into bin, and all we're going to need here we're going to need two scripts that we just created effect system and effect system starter and we just copy those and we'll just put them into our mod under codex and double check our effects dot nad here make sure we got everything 
in here. So, a rundown of what we just did. We created two scripts. Effect system starter. Wait a sec. Is that effect system start? That's effect system starter. Probably going to need to change that. Maybe somebody caught that earlier. <clears throat> make sure the it, it's it's also cap sensitive, so you got to make sure that your caps are correct. So effect system starter, effect system starter, effect system, effect system. So what we did was we just created a basic rule here that uh, that debugs the damage system and assures that that uh, non-vampires take lethal damage from bullets while vampires take not only normal damage from bullets but they will only take half that damage and that's that's pretty much the gist of what we basically did for our backbone for the mod we just created separating putting putting the damage override script directly into these effects is not really a good idea um, you really should separate it out as a new effect that does not synchronize with clients so now what we do now that we have uh, we have created our backbone we can just test this uh, basic backbone out right now if we want to so we're gonna save the effects out NAD file and how we're gonna test this out first off we need to knob both of these code we need to knob the codex and we need to knob the uh, miscellaneous and they have to be knobbed separately and to knob a codex you have to directly take scripts that are in codex and explicitly for a codex knob is essentially you take class scripts directly and you right click on them and in 7-zip you can just uh, right click and have 7-zip appear right there on the the quick list and just go add to archive and from this list we can uh, change this to zip um, compression level should be store and that's pretty much most of what we have to do so what we do is we just make sure that the name of the file is codex.knob <coughs> and what that does is creates a functional knob file and what we're going to cut do is cut this out and put this into the root directory of our my mod folder and now we're going to create a knob of our miscellaneous as well we're going to add to archive we're going to call this my mod dot knob now we're ready we're ready to start testing now best thing to do before you test anything um, so let's not worry about those it, it, essentially uh, delete everything from the clip crypt or or move the move any important characters that you have out um, if you're making a mod there are no important characters you're gonna lose a lot of characters uh, in the midst of designing a mod for the game so yeah be sure to move characters out uh, nothing is sacred <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna have crash and crash issues um, by uh, keeping old characters, especially if you're changing your backbone significantly later on during development of your mod, um, you're going to be mess messing up your script over and over again. Also with save games as well, don't bother trying to load a save game after creating a mod. Odds are you'll probably have to go into save games and remove any data from the save games as well to make sure that uh, your mod has a fresh start and it won't crash you'll be doing this very often it'll be done pretty much religiously so what we need to do now to get our mod functioning all we have to do is create a shortcut of our executable to start we're, we're, we're just I'm just going to use the basic executable and in, the, in this uh, shortcut we're going to right click go to properties and to get our mod folder to run we put a uh, extension here for user and what this will do is it'll it'll, uh, it'll take our uh, user folder we just created my mod and it'll it'll have any data inside this my mod 
uh, override um, any anything else. So this is how you get your effects overridden and whatnot separately from the game without having to mess with the the main process of the game. <clears throat> and I'm also going to extend console to that so that's how you get a mod to run and to, to test out and make sure that works we're going to run the game using this executable let's see if our uh, damage override is actually working let's try this Ow. Oh, help there it goes. gang members <laughs> help gang members <laughs> 